In today's video, we're going to be benchmarking the brand new Horizon Zero Dawn with nine budget graphics cards. And despite what you might have been hearing, I've actually been pleasantly surprised with this game. Let's have a look. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. Today I'm going to be sharing and explaining the benchmarking results for these nine budget graphics cards. First, I'll show you how all of these cards stack up side by side with the exact same settings, and then we'll dial it down to each individual card and I'll show you the settings that I would personally recommend. Today's video is sponsored by GVG Mall, an online key reseller with our favorite Windows 10 Pro keys. If you're looking to remove that nasty Windows 10 unactivated watermark on your latest gaming PC, head on down to the links in the description. Here you'll find a Windows 10 Pro OEM key for under 17 bucks, but we want it cheaper than that. Select buy now and enter the discount code ZTT18 for an exclusive 18% off discount, which drops the price down to just 13 bucks. Go through the rest of the purchasing options. I'd recommend PayPal. And within a minute or so, you'll get your Windows 10 Pro key. Now on your PC, click start and type in activation and press enter. Choose change product key, paste in your new key and bang, Windows 10 is now activated. This is my personal way of activating my PCs. Check out my purchased order history here. So grab a Windows 10 key for yourself with the link in the description using discount code ZTT18. All right, so before jumping straight into the fancy graphs and benchmarking results, there are a few quick disclaimers that I want to get out on the table. First up is that I'm sure that most of you have seen by now that a lot of people are not happy with the Horizon Zero Dawn port over to PC. And although I'm not discrediting anyone because everybody has different hardware, this benchmarking run went absolutely super smoothly for me. I was fully prepared for this to be an awful benchmarking experience, kind of like the launch of Red Dead Redemption 2 or Metro Exodus, but I was pleasantly surprised when I found out that there was a benchmarking tool. And the best part is, is that it produces some predictable results that actually translate directly to the gameplay. Because of this, I'm definitely adding Horizon Zero Dawn to my list of benchmarking games for future build guides. I also found out that your gameplay is always going to be about five to 10 less FPS than the benchmarking tools results. There's no grass while running that tool, for example, but that five to 10 FPS was super consistent. So just keep that in mind when you see the benchmarking numbers, which are coming up soon. I also noticed that the FPS results you get from the tool are still able to be achieved, but they're in the high end of what you can expect. An example of this is if you get 60 FPS running the benchmarking tool, when you actually play the game, I would expect around 50 to 55 FPS, but you will indeed get around that 60 FPS whenever you're in an easier to run area of the map. As far as issues go, I didn't see a single crash when using nine different graphics cards, 10 if you actually include my RTX 2080 Ti. And speaking of which, although people aren't happy with with the port of this game, Horizon Zero Dawn looks really beautiful with higher end hardware. During the gameplay and even during certain cutscenes like this one, the people just look so real in my opinion and the graphics were just so satisfying. I also noticed that no matter what card I tested with today, even if the FPS results were low, they all remain very consistent and the 1% lows were never terrible. This means that even if you have a low end card and can only get like 30 FPS, this 30 FPS is still playable because it's a smooth 30 FPS. This was at least the case with my Ryzen 5 3600. Speaking of which, I found Horizon Zero Dawn to be a GPU benchmarker's dream as the 3600's utilization was always averaging around 25% or so, meaning that this game relies more on the GPU compared to anything else. This is the exact opposite of something like CSGO or Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Now there was one issue that I had with the game that wasn't a deal breaker or a crash or anything, but every time you boot up the game up for the first time with new hardware, it has to optimize the settings and this takes a really long time and I couldn't figure out any way how to skip it. Hopefully in the future, Future, this gets an update so you can skip it, but the problem is that this optimization took forever and the lower end the GPU was, the longer it took to run. With my RTX 2080 Ti, I didn't really think anything of it at first because it only took like two minutes or so, but then with cards like the GTX 1050 Ti, it took 10 minutes long, and then with the GTX 750 Ti, it took 30 minutes. That's 30 minutes of optimizing the settings and you just have to sit there and wait before you can fire up the game. And with all that being said, it's now time to start actually benchmarking this thing. For testing today, I decided to throw every card in the $800 gaming PC that I just uploaded a video on last week. This is rocking a 6 core and 12 threaded Ryzen 5 3600, 16 gigabytes of RAM clocked at 3000 megahertz, and the game was installed on this 500 gigabyte Intel 660p SSD. For the graphical settings, there's actually not a lot of options to choose from as you can see here. For testing to make things easier, I didn't customize them and I use presets for the most part. There are certainly ways to optimize your settings even more, and the game does a little bit by telling you what each individual 
setting does, so just keep that in mind. To test all of these cards with the exact same settings, I settled on 1080p and medium preset, and here's what I came up with. On the Nvidia side, you can see that the cards scaled up correctly, as you would expect, although I guess I did expect the 1650 would perform a little bit better. The GTX 750 Ti and GTX 960 are the only cards here rocking 2GB of VRAM, and running this game in 1080p medium with these two cards isn't recommended. Over on the AMD side, things looked a little bit better, as the 560 at least got over 30 FPS, and then everything else got above 60 with proper scaling. Next up, I'm going to show you the exact settings that I would recommend for each graphics card. For these types of games, I usually aim for 60 FPS, but just remember that I said in the beginning of this video that this game runs very consistently, so even like 40 FPS is still a smooth and playable 40 FPS in my opinion. Starting with the Nvidia side of things, first up was the GTX 750 Ti, obviously a very outdated card at this point, but I have a feeling a lot of you are still running it, and for this one, I did have to drop the settings as low as they can go while maintaining 720p resolution, and I got 42 FPS. Next up was the GTX 960. This is the 2 gigabyte model, and in 1080p with the lowest possible settings, it got 39 FPS. 39 FPS might seem low, but because the 1% low was solid and smooth, I decided that I personally rather stay in 1080p instead of going to 720p to get closer to that 60 FPS mark. The GTX 1050 Ti followed after that, also kept the settings at 1080p and the lowest like the 960, and here I squeezed out 51 FPS. I think this benchmark goes to show that although this game runs smoothly like I keep saying, this game definitely isn't that optimized, especially on the Nvidia side of things. Next up was the GTX 1060 3GB model, and in 1080p with medium settings, I got 59 frames per second. And finally, for the last Nvidia card, we have the GTX 1650. This one is rocking 4GB of GDDR5, so it's not the improved GDDR6 type, and here in 1080p low, I got 62 FPS. Moving over to the AMD side of things, where the game ran a bit better to be honest, the first card up was the RX 560, and in 1080p with the lowest settings, I got 42 FPS. Next up was the RX 570, and I think we benefited from more VRAM from here on out because in 1080p with medium settings, I got a solid 64 FPS, which is already our highest benchmark of the day. Continuing on, we have the RX 580. I actually was able to jack up the settings to 1080p and high for this one, and here I scored 58 frames per second. And finally, for the last card of the day, I tested the RX 5500 XT, which some people may question if this is really a budget GPU or not. By the way, all of these cards are just what I had laying around my studio, so please don't think that this was an optimized GPU list or anything, but yeah, in 1080p and high settings, the 5500 XT was able to crank out 65 frames per second. So with those results, as you can see, every card could produce at least playable numbers, but I think we can all agree that this game isn't as optimized as we would have liked, and I can only hope that they'll make big improvements here in the near future. Before letting you guys go, I do want to remind you that our ZTT Discord server is such an incredible resource these days. Not only do we have a great PC building and gaming community, but there's also the ZTT Builds channel, which lists out a ton of gaming PC build guides from both me and the community, and we also have the ZTT Deals channel where I post my daily deals to help save you some money. I really hope to see you over there. Feel free to also comment down below with what specs and results you're seeing in Horizon Zero Dawn to help out some people with cards that I didn't test today. And finally, I hope you enjoyed this video.